Hi everyone, welcome back to Scrap in Scotland. Today guys we're going to do a bit of a different video than we're normally used to doing. Today I'm not actually going to tear something down at all, but what I am going to do is I'm going to take you through the marvel of this electronic item. Uh, and I'm going to do that because it's one of the most frequent things that us scrappers scrap. Okay, now they've changed over the years, they've uh, went through many evolutions, uh, and I'm going to take you through how they work uh, and why scrappers scrap it. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this one, guys. Okay, guys, so this is what we're going to break down. Metaphorically, that is. Microwaves used to be one of the best things to scrap as they contain multiple motors, transformers, and they contain a magnetron. Today, as I say, I'm going to talk you through the main components that make this microwave work. And we'll metaphorically break it down, because it is an astonishing piece of technology. First, let's talk about the main thing people are always after when scrapping microwaves. Transformers. The job of the transformer is to convert your standard household voltage of around 240 volts to the thousands of voltage levels required for cooking. The voltage output from the secondary blade connector from the transformer is usually around 2200 volts and that my friends is certainly enough to kill you. So do not touch a plugged in transformer. If you're taking these things apart, unplug them. Do not touch one that is plugged in. Okay, so now we know how the power is generated. Unfortunately for scrappers, these transformers are more and more becoming aluminium. And what I mean by that is the coils that are within the transformer itself are more commonly now, or more often than not, aluminium. They all used to be copper, but a double copper transformer is becoming rare, whilst manufacturers find way to cut costs. So that's our power source. That's what makes the power of the microwave. Next, let's talk about the beating heart of the microwave. Yes, you guessed it. The beating heart of the microwave is the magnetron. Doesn't only sound cool, it is a really, really cool component. This amazing piece of technology was developed during the Second World War as part of radar technology. They were developed into cavity magnetrons that we are familiar with inside our microwaves today. They are essentially a high-powered vacuum tube. The magnetron generates microwaves using the interaction of a stream of electrons with a magnetic field, whilst moving past a series of cavity resonators, which are these small open cavities you can see here. Electrons pass by the cavities and cause microwaves to oscillate within, similar to a whistle producing a tone when exiting an airstream blown past its opening. To give a slight demonstration of that, I've got an empty bottle and I've got an airflow and I'll show you what I mean by producing that tone. <laughs> Okay guys, so how does the magnetron actually release the microwaves into the cooking chamber? And this is obviously our cooking chamber. Well, it uses a thing called waveguides, and those are usually kind of metal rods uh, that are attached to the magnetron and release those waves into this cooking chamber. So inside the microwave, as you can see, this cover on the right hand side, this is the wave waveguide cover. Uh, the top piece up here will be the antenna from the magnetron and the bottom piece here will be a cavity which uh, is the waveguide that, that allows a flow of uh, microwaves into the cooking chamber. Okay, they release it in what's called a standing wave and what that means is they'll just bounce off the inside. It doesn't kind of resonate all the way around this chamber and it'll bounce off the inside of the chamber and eventually hit the cooking plate where your food is and it'll heat up your food, okay? But why doesn't it release? Why doesn't it come out of this chamber? What keeps those microwaves inside? Well, I'll tell you what keeps those microwaves inside and a great part of that is the door, okay? The door, as you can see, 
It is glass, so you can see inside it. You know, you can see my hand on the other side of the door there. Okay? And if you close it, you can see inside the microwave. You can see the light still in there. Okay? So you can see inside. But this is metal, okay? Inside here is metal. There's obviously a glass piece to this, but inside here is metal. And it has the little holes that you can see through. So what this does, guys, is it acts as a res reverse Faraday cage and make sure that none of the microwaves can actually come out of the microwave oven itself. All the microwaves are contained within the microwave. So how do you resolve the issue of the standing waves bouncing around inside the Faraday cage, not heating all parts of your food evenly? Clearly not hitting all parts of the food inside. The problem was solved using this rotating plate which moved food evenly through the standing wave, ensuring your food was heated evenly all the way through, inside and out. The early microwaves used to insert a rotating plate until they moved to the internal plate powered by the synchronous motor. This gives a set amount of rotations per minute, commonly around 5 to 10 rotations, and can be linked directly to our final component, which is of course, the timer. Without the timer, Food manufacturers could not recommend cooking times. And as a result of that, your food would either remain uncooked or burnt to a crisp. So you can see guys, microwave oven, us scrappers just scrap them apart and don't really think much about the components. But look at all the amazing things that is within this. All these components put together make it easy for you to cook your food just by the push of a button. What would we do without microwaves? And what would we do without the scrappers recycling all of these metals, guys? Yeah, so don't throw these away. Either bring them to your recycling centre or contact your local scrapper and they will be glad to have this and scrap this out for the components that are inside. So guys, that's a bit of a whistle-stop tour on the components of a microwave and why us scrappers love to scrap them out. They are great things for scrapping. As I say, the transformers are more commonly now aluminium than copper, which is a bit of a shame for us scrappers, but you can't have everything. Uh, and it is a wonder of technology. Uh, so if you find one of those copper ones, you're doing well. Uh, most of the ones I find nowadays, probably 10 to 1 is aluminium. Uh, so it's a bit of a shame. But there's still other goodies inside there. There's still small transformers. As I say, some other small motors uh, and that magnetron. So hopefully you enjoyed that one, guys. If you did, please hit that like button and please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in electronics and electronic teardowns. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.